Welcome to my lecture on program evaluation and review technique. It's a statistical tool used in project management to estimate the duration of the project. In my previous lecture, we have seen how to use critical path method to find the duration of the project. In that, we have a definite duration of individual activities of a project. In contrast to that, program evaluation and review technique has different time estimates for individual activities. So it is probabilistic in nature. The different time estimates are optimistic time, most likely time and pessimistic time. Now let us see what is optimistic time. It is the shortest estimated time period to accomplish a task. Assuming everything proceeds better than normally expected. The example cases are if necessary resources are available and all the preceding activities are completed in time as we planned. Most likely time. It is the best estimate of the time required to accomplish a task. Assuming everything proceeds as normal. And the last one is pessimistic time. It is the longest estimated time period to accomplish a task. Assuming everything goes wrong. That means if resource unavailability is available and a lot of rework is needed for individual activities. Now we have to find out here a definite time that is the expected time in order to construct the network. So it is found by using the above three different time estimates. It's a weighed average time and the expected time duration is found by using the formula. It is the summation of optimistic time and four times of most likely time and pessimistic time divided by six. Now we are going to use program evaluation and review technique to solve a problem to find duration of the project, critical path and free float. The project activities are given below. The first column represent the activities and the second column which shows the preceding activity that means the interrelationship between the each activities third and fourth fifth column represents optimistic time most likely time and pessimistic time first let us find out the expected time for individual activities by using the formula first let us do this for the first activity that is a so we have uh, optimistic time 5, most likely time 6 and pessimistic time as 7. So by using this formula, the expected time duration is found as 6. Likewise, we can do the same calculation to find out the expected time for each and every activities in a project. Now let us see how to draw the network diagram by using the interrelationship between the activities. The activity A, B and C does not have any preceding activities. So the activity A, B, C can be started simultaneously. The activity D needs A to complete. So an arrow mark is drawn from a to D. Likewise, activity E needs B to complete. Activity F needs C to complete. Activity G needs C to complete. Activity H needs E, F needs to be completed. And activity I needs D to complete. And activity J needs H and G needs to complete. And the activities I and J does not have any successor. So that leads to the end point. Now we are going to see how to find out the duration of the project by using the network diagram. It is an exaggerated view of the network diagram. Here, individual activity 
is represented by a smaller uh, tabular column as shown in here which represent the name of the activity duration of that activity and earliest start time earliest finish time latest start time and latest finish time now uh, we're going to fill all the uh, activity name and duration of that activities now we are going to carry out the forward pass to find out the earliest start and the earliest finish time of each and every activity the activities a b and c can be started simultaneously it does not require any activity to complete so it can be started on zeroth day so for activity a the earliest start time is zero so the earliest finish time is zero plus the duration of that activity that is six for the activity b it can be also started on the zeroth day so the earliest finish time is zero plus three it is three for the activity c it can also be started on the zeroth day so the earliest finish time of activity c is 0 plus 4 which is 4 now for the activity d it needs a to complete so the earliest start time of the activity d is earliest finish time of activity a that is 6 so the earliest finish time is 6 plus the duration of the activity D it is 8 now for the activity E it needs B to complete so the earliest start time is 3 and the earliest finish time of the activity E is 3 plus 3 it is 6 now for the activity F the earliest start time is 4 because it needs input from C it need to wait until C is complete so the earliest finish time of C is earliest start time of F. So the earliest finish time of F is 4 plus 5, it is 9. And for G, it also needs input from C. So the earliest start time of G is earliest finish time of C. So it is 4. So the earliest finish time of G is 4 plus 3, it is 7. Now for the activity H, it needs input from both E and F. So it has to wait until the activities E and F is complete. So the earliest start time of H is the maximum of 6 and 9. That means the earliest finish times of E and F 6 and 9. So we have to choose the maximum of these two numbers that is 9. Now the earliest finish time of H is 14, 9 plus 5 it is 14. For the activity I, it needs input from D, so that means it has to wait until D is complete. So the earliest start time is 8 and the earliest finish time is 8 plus 5 that is 13. Finally for the activity J, it needs in input from H and G. That means it has got two preceding activities that is H and G. So we have to choose the maximum between 14 and 7 for the earliest start time of activity J. So it is going to be 14. So the earliest finish time of J is calculated by adding 14 and 3 it is 17. So now we have got two tail end activities which does not have any successor that is activity i and j the maximum value of earliest finish times of these two activities to be selected as the duration of the project so that here it is 17 for the activity j and for the activity i it is 13 so the project duration is maximum of these two values that is 17 days now we are going to see how to perform backward pass to find out the latest start time and latest finish time of individual activities. 
the activities i and j or the tail activities they do not have any succeeding activities so the latest finish time of activity i is total duration of the project that is 17 so the latest start time of activity i is 17 minus 5 that is 12 for the activity j the latest finish time is duration of the project that is 17 the latest start time is 17 minus 3 that is 14 the activity h has only one successor that is j so the latest start time of activity j is latest finish time of activity h that is 14 the latest start time of activity h is 14 minus 5 that is 9 now for the activity g it also has got only one successor that is j so the latest finish time is 14 and the latest start time is 14 minus 3 that is 11 now for the activity f it has got only one successor that is h so the latest start time of h that is 9 is going to be latest finish time of activity f the latest start time is calculated by subtracting the duration of the activity f that is 5 from the 9 that is here it is 4 activity e has got only one successor that is h so the latest start time of h is taken as latest finish time of activity e the latest start time of e is calculated by subtracting the duration of that activity from the latest finish time that is 9 minus 3 that is 6 the activity d has got only one successor that is i so the latest start time of activity i is taken as latest finish time of activity d the latest start time of d is calculated by subtracting the duration that is 2 from the 12 that is 10 now for the activity a it has got only one successor that is d so the latest start time of activity d is taken as latest finish time of activity a the latest start time is 10 minus 6 that is 4 activity b has got only one succeeding activity that is e so the latest start time of activity e that is 6 is taken as latest finish time of activity b the latest start time is 6 minus 3 that is 3 activity c has got two succeeding activities that is f and g so the latest start time of these two activities that is 4 and 11 from which the minimum value has to be taken as the latest finish time of activity c so the minimum value between 4 and 11 that is 4 that is taken as latest finish time of activity c the latest start time of activity c is 4 minus 4 that is 0 now we are going to see how to find out the total float or slack value total float is the difference between latest start and earlier start or otherwise can be calculated between the difference between latest finish and earliest finish for the activity a it is 4 minus 0 that is 4 or otherwise 10 minus 6 that is 4 so the total float for the activity a is 4 similarly we can find out the total float for the all the activities So here you can see for few activities the total float value is 0 that is for the activity C and activity F and activity H and activity J. So these activities are critical that means if total float value is 0 these activities cannot be delayed for even a single day if it is delayed then the total duration of the project will be extended so for example if activity c is delayed by one day then the total duration of the project will be increased by one day it become 18 days on the other hand activity b is non-critical which has got the total float value of three so it can be delayed for three days it means activity b can be started anywhere between zero and third day 
and it can be finished any time between third and sixth day and now the critical path is C F H J thank you for watching the lecture